Hello all, Zysos here, just bringing the promised loadout guide for Meet Your Maker. For this guide I will be assuming that you have everything maxed out, which I know isn't necessarily the case, but the stuff should still roughly apply. If you don't, it's just that the, the numbers will be a little bit off, like you won't have as many bullets, etc. And your aim... I would assume is to get these things maxed if you are liking the loadout overall. As for a too long didn't watch for what I'm going to be talking about, the uh, Ironside suit here is the ranged suit, it should be used for ranged loadouts. The Kamaitachi suit here is the melee suit, it should be used for melee um, loadouts. If you have a hybrid you probably want to combine perks from both of these. Uh, which we'll go over in a minute. Uh, as for the actual weapon loadouts, the um, it's hard to go wrong with the shield, the starter loadout's pretty good, and dual swords also works pretty well. As does dual gun, um, though that can have some issues. The um, most loadouts uh, have their niche regardless though, which we'll go over when we get to them. Uh, also, I won't be going into the hardware consumables because the they all have like their own particular use, but they're not really going to change your play style too much because you only have a few of them and you can't rely on them for a whole base if you need to do things multiple times. So that won't be something that I'll cover in this video. Let's start with the suits. Um, so the suits here, as I said, range suit, melee suit, you start in the iron side suit, which is the range suit, uh, it ha will only have one of its three perks unlocked, I believe it's the rapid fire perk, um, which increases the fire rate of your ranged weapon that you start with. These other two perks make ammo visible at a longer range and make ammo pick up from a longer range. As for the melee suit, melee suit, um, so it has movement speed when you destroy a trap for four seconds with a melee, a trap or guard for four seconds after, uh, a movement speed increase of 30% for four seconds after destroying a trap or guard with a melee weapon. So you hit a guard, you get to move faster. Very useful because when you lunge into some dangerous spot, it actually allows you to back up further than you would normally be able to back up. So you can get out of dangerous situations and just generally like dodge hunter arrows and such is a big one that comes up a lot as opposed to just being hit by them because they, cur they curve a bit and go around the corners sometimes. The increased melee lunge range, this also I feel is really important, but specifically if you're using the sledge blade, because the sledge blade has like an has an eight meter, um, which is two blocks, lunge range. Add, uh, adding thirty percent onto that means that you're now getting like two point six blocks, um, which is a lot. And considering how fast lunging is, speaking of, the last one is a forty five percent increase to lunge speed. Considering how fast lunge speed is by default, and with this on top of it, you basically just instantly get to whatever you're lunging at. For hybrids, you could also miss it, mix and match them. These purple perks are mastered perks, so I've mastered the entirety of this. These perks can be swapped out, but can also be swapped onto other suits. So I can put any of these three melee uh, perks into the position of this one. So I could get rid of Magnetic Link um, and put on one of the melee suits, or I could put Magnetic Link onto any of the slots on the melee suit. So in the weapons. So the weapons currently are split into three categories. There are obviously five of them, as listed here. Um, defensive, range, and melee. Uh, Arc Barrier is the only defensive weapon. It is a shield that goes around you. If you time your shield properly, it uh, cre uh, creates an increased shield duration. And as you level it up, it gains the ability to grapple while shielded or to use hardware consumables while shielded. Both of which can be very useful. But the main thing with the arc barrier is the 
initial shield, I feel. Uh, the Falconic Plasma Blow bow is up next. It's already fast firing. Uh, you'll notice a reload time of 0.5 seconds, so you can shoot two arrows a second. Has 15 ammo capacity when fully leveled up. It just basically gains ammo capacity like every level. The increased projectile launch speed just means that it flies faster, which means that there's, it's less affected by the drop-off from the bolts, because all bolts are affected by gravity. Um, and the heavier projectiles here stops them from bouncing quite as ridiculously as they do in the early stages, because the plasma bow bolts don't stick into surfaces. Uh, they do into some, but not others. So like glass and metal, I believe they bounce off of, but things like stone they stick into. But the main thing to note here is the damage type. You see striking and then in brackets flesh. As that just means that it's a striking damage type. Uh, and striking damage can only uh, hurt flesh. So it will kill guards if you don't hit armor. If, But it will not damage the armor plates on guards or... It won't damage traps. It can't damage traps. Uh, next up is the Vault Lancer. This is the starting gun. Um, it is a crushing damage type. So, yeah, flesh armor traps. So it will damage. That's everything in the game. Still has the same, like, effective range as the Plasma Vote. It's still 40 meters. But you'll notice the ammo capacity is only 3 as opposed to 15 here. So you really got to go and collect your bolts with this one. It also has a reload time of one second. It only gets that on its third upgrade. It's still very usable at two with the two second reload time. It's just you have to be um, more cautious because you don't, you won't be able to um, take those uh, quick shots as often. And if you miss your two seconds before you can shoot again. So, arguably, this was getting the most use out of the uh, reload speed perk for the suit, but once it, but you get a bigger boost from just leveling it up to V rather than leveling up that perk. Though it does make it very quick when it is fully leveled up. Uh, now onto melee, uh, Fury's Edge. This is the starter sword. This is a breaking damage type, so flesh and traps, so it can't damage armor, which is important. Has a lunge speed of 15 meters per second. I think both the swords have a lunge speed of 15 meters per second. Lunge range of 4.5 meters, so that's a little bit over one square. And a swing delay of 0.8. Uh, each of the upgrades just reduces the swing delay by 0.1, so it's 1, not 0.9, 0.8 with the fully upgraded one. Uh, but the important thing is this deflects projectiles um, trait. So this is often referred to as the as a parry in, uh, by the community, pretty much. Uh, but basically, when you swing this sword, if there is a bolt, or if there is a projectile in front of you, it um, doesn't necessarily need to be a bolt. Um, you can deflect, from what I've seen, uh, Bombs from the bomb trap, the cannon back shots, the bolts from enforcers, the bolts from bolt traps, the like plasma -y bolt things from hornets. I haven't tried plasma sentinels yet, uh, especially not with the Nova, um, to see if I can deflect those. What it seems to be is when you hit, you hit your attack when you've got a bolt in front of you, it will play a special sound, you'll get like 0.1 seconds of iframes, maybe not even that. Now, Sludge Blade, you can't deflect projectiles, but that doesn't mean you can't hit them. Um, so if you hit a bolt trap, bolts, you will destroy it with any weapon. Um, it's just not very functional most of the time. But in, in some very rare cases, it might be worth it, particularly like Enforcer Bolts. Notice the swing delay here, 1.3 seconds instead of 1, uh, 0.8. It's very slow. It, it starts at 1.4, it only gets to 1.3 on the third level. I actually don't think that's a particularly big boost, but the um, next thing is the lunge range 
8 meters. It starts at 6, becomes 2 at level 2. Uh, become, it gets plus 2 at level 2. Becomes 8, which is 2 full squares. This thing lets you fly around the map very well. You can like fly into the air using the lunge. It also does a crushing damage type, similar to the Vault Lancer, um, which means it can destroy anything, as opposed to other, all other weapons being limited to some to a subsection of things. This, I feel, is a very strong primary weapon, if you can get used to it. Okay, so let's start with the loadouts. Uh, let's just start from the top, and we'll work our way down. There are 10 overall. Uh, so the first one would be Arc Barrier and Volcanic Plasma Bow. So this one I would not generally recommend. I think it is probably the most niche um, combination that you could make, because the it can only damage flesh. So it can only hit guards, and you have to dodge their armor if they have it. It's very situational, because there's a lot of situations where you need to be able to damage a trap. For instance, if you've got one of those, there's a common layout that people use where they can put an incinerator at one end and then some pistons um, down a like one by one corridor. It's just, it's designed to stop people from just running through. The volcanic if volcanic plasma bow cannot do anything to the pistons, but also can't do anything to the incinerator. So you pretty much have to time it and run through, which is almost impossible, if not impossible, depending on how it's set up. Uh, Arc Barrier and Bolt Lancer, however, very good. This is a very good loadout because it's able to damage everything, and the Arc Barrier can really help you go and get your shots, because you can... Between this and the Magnetic Link perk, you can actually go... You can, like, dip into Acid and grab bolts from, like, multiple blocks deep acid and then still get out in time. It's ludicrous. Uh, the... Basically, any any area where you can um, safely get in and get out, even if it's, like, a little... Even if it's fairly chaotic, you can get your shots back um, with this setup. Like, this is possibly one of the best loadouts in the game. This is one that if you are trying to systematically dismantle bases, this is probably the loadout that you'll want to use. I, I haven't, like, there might be sometimes you need to run through things, or some things might just be easier if you run through them, because, what, because there is times like that, but this minimizes the number of times that that'll ever come up. And you'll be able to just destroy everything if you're careful. If you're careful and good enough. Arc Barrier and Fury's Edge is up next. Arc, Arc Barrier and Fury's Edge is a speedrunning, um, speedrunning one. These are the two defensive weapons in the game. Um, like this one's actually rated, ranked as defensive, but this one's stuff like projectiles makes it kind of like a hybrid defensive weapon. These combination of, of two weapons is purely designed to keep you alive, which is why I say it's the speedrunning strategy, because you can like run into bolts, use the Fury's Edge to defo deflect um, bolts and grappling hooks and whatnot, and then, use, and then keep the Arc Barrier charged for when you actually need it, meaning you can move in and out of places so much quicker. You won't be able to hit armor, but everything that is armor has a weak spot uh, and the so you'll still be able to hit it and next up is arc barrier and sledge blade um, this is just the melee equivalent of the vault lancer i don't think it's quite as good you can still systematically dismantle a lot here um, it's just that the particularly guards with armor can be pretty dangerous with that 1.3 second swing delay. I still think this is a very good loadout, um, and you'll see some high level players running it if you like watching YouTube videos or Twitch or something. The, it's definitely got its um, uses, like the fact that you just don't even need to worry about ammo is great, the fact that it can speed run, it can, it can be a good like hybrid 
it can be a good hybrid where you try to beat the level normally and then or beat as much of the level normally as you can and then just speed run those last extra sections. Next up, we got volcanic plasma bow um, loadouts. So dual gun, volt, la uh, volt lancer, and volc volcanic plasma bow. Um, this is pretty legit. It has no defensive options, um, but it is a ranged loadout, so the it can kind of make up for that. Um, you end up with just so many shots, and your volcanic plasma bow shots can be used for things that you would normally like to do but can't really do you can't really afford the ammo on just in case so like checking hollow cubes um if you just shoot them with volcanic plasma bow or even there is a weird case where you shoot down grappling hooks it can be pretty risky if you uh but you might need to go for it and ha uh if you have dual gun you are only risking one of your 15 volcanic plasma bow bullets as opposed to one of your very volt lancer bullets which can be interesting yeah the this is very good if there's like a mix of if there's a mix of traps and guards you'll typically try to kill the guards with the volcanic plasma bow and leave the traps for the volt lancer and obviously use the ranged suit so that you can have all those ranged perks that will really boost up your power. And this combination will work really well for that. Next up, uh, Plasma Bow and Fury's Edge. I don't think this is a particularly great combination. Um, because you will have issues with incinerators. You can't parry incinerators because they don't have a projectile. And you're just getting up to them fast enough to actually destroy them with Fury's Edge can be quite difficult. As for the Volcanic Plasma Bow and the Sledgeblade, um, same problem, honestly. It's you're still going to have issues against incinerators. Uh, it's a little bit better because the lunge speed, uh, like if you are just facing down an incinerator with no, um, little to no pistons in front of it or um, other support, you can grapple and you can grapple onto the incinerator, charge it down straight on and hit it with the sledge blade. The timing is a little rough, but it does work out. Let's go over the Volt Lancer pair with the swords. Um, so Volt Lancer and Fury's Edge, the starting loadout. This is actually pretty good. Um, I don't think it's quite as good as the Volt Lancer and Arc Barrier, but with this particular combination, you can save your ammo for things that are further away. Um, so if you have something that's really near you, which it, this doesn't really matter if you have the full magnetic link perk because you can pick up your ammo close by so from so far away that you can basically just shoot them but it also allows for like a one-two punch where you like vault lance the armor and then immediately furies edge them uh, which can be useful um, on armored things if you don't think you can get a headshot easily like particularly like warmongers that are charging you down their heads are pretty small there are other ways around that, though. Uh, yeah, so... It also gives you some level of defensive capability because of the deflex projectiles. For the Volt Lancer and Sledge Blade, um, it's pretty similar to the Volt Lancer and Fury's Edge, but you have less defensive options. You'll be slightly better at the actual destroying of things because you have that longer lunge range, which makes it easier to get into the melee. Uh, and you do still have the two shots and it's nice being able to go either direction like either left then right click or right then left and still get the armor destruction which can be helpful if you're um, having issues with that but uh, the fact that both 
kind of slow, like one second reload and 1.3 on the swing speed. Like the most traps have about a 1.5 delay. It can make things a little scary sometimes, um, especially if there's multiple traps. As well as the fact that you have no defensive options. Uh, I've used it, it's okay. Um, I would generally recommend the starter loadout over it, but it's still pretty good. It's just, I feel like these are both primary weapons, whereas you kind of really need a good secondary weapon, like the Arc Barrier or Fury's Edge, a lot of the time. As for the last loadout that we have, Fury's Edge and Sledge Blade, that the Dual Sword loadout, this is my personal favourite. It can't destroy everything, so you, unlike the uh, like dual gun or vault lancer and arc barrier loadouts, which are more designed to destroy everything, the this won't be able to do that because you there will just be situations where you can't get to the trap. The biggest ones are like if there's multiple levels of acid. You can kind of do it using like double jumps and whatnot, and you can definitely get there with the lunge, because you can always get there with the lunge. But getting back can be really dangerous, and then like having to repeatedly do that perfectly for like multiple tries is very dangerous. And it's in a lot of those cases it's generally better to just move forward a little bit and dodge it. But the important thing with this particular loadout is you can maintain a forward momentum through traps really far, like a really fast forward momentum through a bunch of traps because you've got the 8 meter range here and the 4.5 meter range here so this gets you to the next trap, this gets you to the block afterwards and then um, then this one will come up first, getting into the block after that, and then this one lets you get two blocks further <laughs> consistently. And um, though that combination is going to like really, I like I, I call it lawnmower fruit traps. You just like slot, you just like sli uh, slicing them all up with your swords. You're going really fast. You don't need to do that. It's only really a thing when there's. A lot of traps in front of you and there's just too much stuff for you to be bothered dealing with. You can also, um, similar to like Vault Lancer and Fury's Edge or Vault Lancer Volcanic Bro, you can do a two weapon attack thing to break armor. Swing this first, swing this, and you can just instantly kill something that has armor. Which is nice. For like conclusions, the Arc Barrier, I think, is just generally very useful because it's the only defensive item in the game. Um, maybe when there's more defensive items, it may not be quite so good as it is now, but, like, these two are the only real defensive options you have for weapons. Um, and considering you die in one shot, it can be very important to have a defensive o uh, object. Uh, so, this pairs very well with these three because of that. Um, whereas the dual gun, dual sword, they both work legitimately, although I think for guns I would recommend Vault Lancer, Arc Barrier more. Swords I'd probably recommend dual swords though. Um, sword and shield, either the sword and shield, just different use cases for the same thing, um, is also pretty legit. Uh, so anyway, that's all the loadout stuff. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If it has, uh, feel free to leave a like and comment. Uh, if you'd like to leave a comment for what you would like a guide for, that's all good. Um, I am out of uh, stuff that I know needs a guide at the moment that I haven't been able to find online. I'll probably be doing some more replay reviews. Uh, I've got... S I, I have seen some maps that I uh, have gone through that I think
could be useful to show off. But at the moment, I haven't got any concrete plans for when the next one will come out. But we'll see. Okay, until next time.